Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Samantha, and I go by she or her pronouns. And I'm pleased to be your host for today's Get to Know Biology and Biomedical Sciences session as part of Ryerson's Virtual Open House, which is taking place from November 9th to the 13th and the 16th to the 20th. There are many sessions taking place across these two weeks, and we encourage you to visit our website and register for any other sessions that may interest you. To start, I'd just like to do a land acknowledgement. Toronto and Ryerson are in the Dish With One Spoon territory. The Dish With One Spoon is a treaty between the Anishinaabes, the Mississaugas, and Haudenosaunee that bound them to the territory and protect the land. Subsequent Indigenous nations and peoples, Europeans, and all newcomers have been invited into this treaty in the spirit of peace, friendship, and respect. Now, Ryerson has shifted to an essential services model to help prevent the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. We have put together a series of virtual open house sessions in order to share information and connect with you. Ryerson is working diligently to provide students with fulsome experiences while maintaining the health and safety of our community. A few Zoom housekeeping, housekeeping tips before we get started. We definitely encourage you to ask questions throughout the session. We have many faculty and staff members here to answer your questions. To do so, use a Q&A pod at the bottom of your Zoom window. Click the Q&A pod to open the dialogue window and type your questions throughout the session. If you're having any audio or video issues, feel free to flag it in the Q&A pod and one of our staff members will be pleased to assist you. You can rearrange the screen in any way that suits you best and note that it will not impact the way that others are viewing your screen. This presentation will be closed captioned to ensure accessibility. So if you do require closed captioning, please select the option at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Also note that all of our virtual open house sessions will be available on our website later on. We would love to know who is joining us today. So in that one brief moment, I will be launching a poll as soon as I can get it open. There we go. So feel free to participate in the poll and let us know who's joining us today. That's one of the most exciting things about having a virtual open house session is we are able to connect with students from across Canada uh, and from around the world, which is really amazing. So I'll leave the poll open for a um, couple of seconds to see exactly where you are in the application process. Coming in fast and furious, I love it. I'll give it a couple more seconds. Okay, so it looks like we have a lot of students who are looking to apply for fall of 2021. So welcome. This is an amazing session because it's going to be all about that process for you. Without any further delay, I'd love to introduce you to your panelists for today. So Dr. Kostin Antonescu, Dr. Vadim Bostan, and Dr. Sarah Sabatinos from our biology and biomedical sciences programs to start the presentation. Over to you folks. First, I'll have to unmute myself before starting presenting our program. Thank you for your interest in biology and uh, welcome to this uh, information session. And we are going to go through a few, a few points today. What is biology? What are some uh, conditions for admission? What are the major elements of the biology curriculum? And uh, we are going also to look at the biology co-op programs and uh, their specifics. So if we can go to the next slide, please. Biology is the big science looking at understanding the, the nature of living organisms. So in various courses, in various research activities, we are looking to develop solid foundations in biology from bacteria to cells, to plants, to animals to fully grasp cellular structure and function, to integrate other disciplines, it's very important, from chemistry to computer science, to bioinformatics, to management, to leading edges, to the leading edge of science and technology. This is one of the, May of the three Bachelor in Science programs that are um, sharing a first year common um, foundation. And uh, after the first year, uh, courses and the curriculum becomes more and more specialized. Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Sabatinos and I'm the undergraduate program director for biomedical science. Biomedical science, you'll notice it has bio in the title. It is um, related in some ways to biology. It is a separate program. 
which um, investigates biomedical science theory and applications. So today we are going to be, we are interleaving our presentations of biology and biomedical science to discuss all the different options in our programs. Uh, but the big thing here, yes, is that it's a separate program. So when you apply for admissions, you're applying to biomedical science specifically um, to be in the BMS program. So what makes these two distinct? Um, so biology is uh, focusing on understanding life at all levels. So you have the multi different systems and it's not necessarily within health concepts. Um, you can be looking at ecology, at ecosystems, population-wide, individuals, but also the cellular and molecular underpinnings that, um, that outline how we believe the way that science works in, the biomedical, in biology and biomedical science. So the interesting thing with the biology program is that you can have many different focuses that you choose to take in your curriculum path. It could range from ecology to genetics to molecular and cell biology. And this includes other things such as um, botany, biochemistry, evolution, um, evolutionary biology, or microbiology. Biomedical science in contrast, remember that this, this is a separate program that you apply to when you um, are entering with admissions, um, it tends to focus more on the processes and diseases that are impacted by that underlying biology with the goal of developing treatments and cures. So in this, you tend to have curriculum focus um, very similarly to biology in many respects with biochemistry, microbiology, cell biology again, molecular biology, um, but also we have options for physiology and again, genetics. Now, one question I'm frequently asked is, how is this different from biomedical engineering? Um, biomedical engineering is actually a separate program within the faculty of engineering. So it's completely distinctive from the faculty of science. And the focus in engineering programs tends to be on the more the application of, of um, science into making devices or constructions that are used to either study biology or are used to apply in treatment of disease. So although they have very similar names, it's um, a separate faculty, separate program. Uh, biomedical science is very distinctive and different from biomedical engineering. Next slide, please. Um, so with a bio, uh, sorry, I wasn't sure if I was taking this one. With a Bachelor of Science in Biology or Biomedical Science, uh, there's multiple different career paths that may be an option for you. Um, and these range from um, scientists or so basic researcher, physician. Many of our students are interested in the big professional programs, such as um, becoming a, a medical doctor, a pharmacist, a dentist, all of these um, post-Bachelor of Science programs. There's also laboratory technician through the Mishner Institute and other similar institutes, environmental consultant, teacher, technical writing is a fantastic area of biomedical science or biology education where you can apply what you've learned. And we are really active in trying to um, promote these sorts of career paths to our biology and biomedical science programs. So for admissions, I'm sure many of you uh, have this question and what are the uh, conditions, the requirements to be accepted in our program. And uh, here you have the description of the uh, minimal requirements. And this consists of an Ontario secondary school diploma or equivalent with a minimum of six grade 12U or M courses, including the following program specific requirements. So you have to have English ng 4 u or EA, uh, EAE for you preferred. Advanced functions, it's another requirement. And then from a science, uh, from the perspective of science uh, courses, you need to have two credits out of three. You have to have either a credit in chemistry or biology or chemistry or physics or biology of, or physics. So two out of three, however, we strongly encourage you to have credits for all three of them. And uh, biology, it's also, uh, as you are applying to biology or biomedical science, biology would be also strongly encouraged to, to have as a credit. Uh, the grades required for um, uh, admission is going to be subject to, to competition and they, they change from year to year. 
Okay, that's over to me. Um, just because I haven't had a chance to say hi yet. Uh, my name is Costin Antonescu, uh, and along with Dr. Bastan, um, we're the program directors for uh, the biology. Uh, so I'll tell you a little bit about what the program in biology is once you get admitted and start in, in, the, in the program. So what courses you're going to be taking and what does that look like um, as you move through the program. So in first year, um, you're going to be taking courses that are essentially uh, full length of the first year in all these subjects that you see here, biology, physics, chemistry, and math. You'll also take um, a credit in computer science. Um, and these are common to all, I shouldn't say all because it's most, um, it's a similar in all programs uh, in, in science. So you'll be sharing classes with students that are in physics um, or, uh, or, or math and other uh, programs in the faculty of science. So everybody in first year tends to take the same courses. These are foundational courses that'll help you learn what you need to learn for uh, success in more advanced courses in later years. And once you start getting in second and third year and beyond, that's when you really start to take the courses that are more specialized to your um, particular program. Uh, so I'll talk a little bit here about uh, biology in particular. So in upper years, we actually offer a few different um, types of courses and a few different streams. So the, the, the idea behind this is that biology is very vast field. Lots of things are alive that we're trying to understand uh, how they work and how important they are to a variety of everything from human health to our, our ecosystem. Um, and so we, we have uh, courses that can be uh, broadly categorized into cell and molecular biology. These are courses that are gonna be on things like viruses, which are really important to know about these days as we all um, uh, are facing that uh, reality, uh, but also in a variety of other um, applications and, and courses, cell signaling, um, cancer biology, and biochemistry of disease and things like that. So things some, some, uh, sometimes related to human health, uh, but at the molecular level. Uh, we also have uh, a, a group, a cohort of courses in environmental biology. So those of you who are interested in the environment um, and ecology and, and ecosystems, there's a variety of different courses that are um, able to uh, to be in, in, bio, in biology, uh, that you can take in biology. And so the, the idea here is that you can customize uh, in large part your uh, courses in your upper years based on what your own area of interest is. And of course, we offer the guidance if you have questions about what to pick and where to go. Um, that's our roles um, as program directors to be able to guide you through, through some of these choices if you, if you find them a little bit overwhelming at times. Hi, I'll, I'll follow up on the biomedical science program. It's very similar to biology in the first year. You um, take biology, chemistry, physics, math, but one of the differences between biomedical science and the biology program is that you take a psychology course, introductory psychology. In the second year, the curriculum opens up to have organic, organic chemistry, biochemistry, microbiology, cell biology. So really more of the ologies again, um, as well as genetics. And then by the third and fourth years, we have specialist courses that really define the biomedical science program, um, including experimental design, um, critical thinking course. Those two are sister courses. So you take one in your third year, one in your fourth year. And then uh, physiology, which is a human physiology course, cancer biology, and stem cell biology. And those are really the core components of the biomedical science curriculum. And in terms of how we frame the program for the biomedical science knowledge going forward. Next slide, please. But that being said, there are many professional concentrations you can have. I noticed a question in the chat that I started to answer, um, but I wasn't fast enough. So you can have a minor in other programs. And I know that there are quite a few of our biomedical science students working toward minors right now. Um, popular minors include um, psychology, math, medical physics. Um, some of our students choose to have a minor in business. And these are things that you work in with your choices of electives. Now, you can also, with your professional electives, choose to concentrate in specific areas going forward. So you may be more interested in biochemistry. And we have some upper level courses on the biochemistry of disease and protein structure and function, glycobiology. We also have uh, more uh, genetics-based courses, genetics and genomics. Um, as well as options in more of a microbiology theme. Um, and so all of these are things that you can choose as a path with the development of your electives 
Uh, and those really open up, these professionally related electives open up to you after you've completed your first year. And then the world really becomes about your choices and what you discover as a part of your path. So I can speak a little bit about the um, co-op options. So all of our programs uh, in the Faculty of Science at Ryerson, including the biology program, um, and the, uh, the biomedical science program offer a co-op option. So you don't have to take co-op, but you can choose to take co-op once you, once you uh, enter the program. Uh, so our, our normal time of completion for a program uh, without doing co-op is four years uh, and doing co-op adds another year to that. Uh, so you would uh, then be expected to complete in, in, in around five or five years. Um, what co-op provides for you is the opportunity to do a number of on-the-job learning, and it is paid uh, employment. So you uh, essentially take a semester off of taking classes to do a paid on-the-job learning, uh, kind of like an internship, but you are being paid during that time. Um, how do you how do you get into the co-op program? It's not something that you're going to necessarily do out of uh, your admissions, but it's something you apply to once you're starting in the program. Um, you need a GPA between three and four to take part in these um, in these programs. So just to give you an idea, a GPA of three is around a B. Uh, so you, so you have to do quite well in your in your courses um, in in first year if this is something you'd like to apply to. So you begin to apply at the beginning of your second year once you've once you've come here. As I said, it adds one year to the program. And I'm just seeing a couple questions in the um, in the chat about what sorts of opportunities are available um, in the biomedical uh, program. And maybe we can have um, some follow-up on that. But typically uh, the types of opportunities you have is we've had placements with, um, uh, for instance, pharmaceutical companies um, like Sanofi and others that are located within, within the, the city of Toronto and, and surrounding areas. We have uh, students that are uh, uh, do internships or, or co-op uh, internships within the hospitals uh, nearby. Uh, so, so those who are interested in more clinical application or setting. Um, and then there's also a variety of other opportunities, uh, for instance, working with the um, uh, Ministry of the Environment uh, and many other things that are related to specific programs. So lots of this, and really what it will depend on is what opportunities are available and what you can apply for in any given term. So this is still something that would require students in the co-op program to apply for um, and and obtain these these co-op placements once they're once they're in the program. So I know that many of you are uh, thinking at uh, following this uh, degree in biology or in biomedical science with a professional school such as medicine, such as dentistry, such as pharmacy, and. Uh, please uh, note that most of these professional schools have requirements regarding certain courses and university experience. And all of the science programs, including biology and biomedical science are suitable to obtain these requirements. In other words, if you do well, and if you uh, complete successfully our program, you will uh, definitely be qualified to apply to uh, one of these professional schools after you graduate. Uh, so, at the same time, uh, we strongly encourage students to think of a back, uh, about a backup plan in case you change your mind, in case your interests are going to bring you in another direction, your professional interests, and to keep this in mind as uh, you go through the program. So one of the opportunities that um, is, is good, not only from a point of view of building contacts and applying your knowledge, but also considering as a potential career path is research. So this is um, biomedical science or biology related research, or perhaps you choose to do research in a different field entirely, such as chemistry. Um, and there's many opportunities for undergraduate students within our programs to take part in projects in research labs. Many of the faculty that teach within our biomedical science and biology programs have active research programs and run labs of their own. Um, that includes all three of myself, Dr. Boston and Dr. Antonescu. And there's a variety of undergraduate research opportunities that are available. So this can include um, USRA awards through the National Science and Engineering Research Council, that's NSERC. Um, for those you would apply in the winter and you apply with a professor. Um, there's also research assistantships that occur through the Faculty of Science and through Ryerson University. 
But then, uh, so those are paid opportunities for research. And we have, um, there are several opportunities for those. They tend to be highly competitive, but definitely something to be aware of and to apply to and to find a research position if this interests you. But aside from that, if you're not entirely sure if research is exactly what you want to do or where you want to go, there's a variety of course type options that you can take. And these count as kinds of credit towards your degree program. This includes the thesis course, this BLG 40 A and B. It is a full year of research. Most students tend to do this in their fourth year. And uh, what that would be is you find a, a professor to work with in the research lab and you work toward a project that, that you then write a thesis at the end and defend the thesis. And I would strongly recommend this as a fantastic option for, for you, it's a good experience to see if you like research over a period of time that allows you to see the highs and the lows. But also at the end, by writing a thesis, you've essentially communicated a small book. And that's not to put you off, it's to say this is an amazing opportunity to show your ability to do work and it's a calling card for you in future opportunities. Um, aside from that, though, we also have this BLG 481, which is sometimes called the mini thesis. It's a one semester course where you again work on a project with a professor um, or we have a non credit research course that allows you to work on a research program. Um, it does show up on your transcript that you have done this, but it does not count as a graded course towards your GPA. So again, research opportunities, there's plenty out there. Um, and there's more information following, but I strongly urge students to consider this as a potential uh, option looking at going forward. So uh, this is a, a slide uh, to, to tell you a little bit about the types of research that you might be able to engage with. So one of the things that can be a little bit intimidating if people want to think about, should I be uh, doing a research project is where do I even get started and how do I do that? Um, and so a lot of students will end up joining um, a research program of one of their faculty members, one of the professors here, um, and sort of learn the ropes as they go along um, and then start to develop and, and sort of build their own research ideas. Um, and so what I'll tell you a little bit about is from the uh, more biomedical side or the cell and molecular biology side, these are opportunities for research um, but with um, faculty members in our department um, in that role. So we have faculty members that are uh, supervising students, including lots of undergraduate students in the biology and biomedical science uh, programs involved in research in these types of disease settings or with applications, these types of diseases. So um, cancer and diabetes and metabolism, um, infection and immunity. Uh, this is something that we're, we're thinking about quite a bit these days. Uh, bacteria and antibiotic resistance and microbiome research, um, cardiometabolic disease, uh, research into viruses, uh, including uh, into COVID-19 related research that, that we have some exciting projects going on with, um, and drug development uh, in a variety of different uh, disease settings. So this is not meant to be a complete list, but just to give you an idea that uh, we have lots of research opportunities in our department, and all of these are open and, and not just open for undergraduate students in biology and biomedical sciences, but one in which we really value and encourage students to get involved in um, and, and really make a difference, not just for themselves in terms of how they learn um, and how you learn, uh, but, but in, in making a difference in how we, we advance our knowledge in these uh, towards the you know, treatments of these uh, different diseases. Another important uh, strength of the research in our department is um, um, the research in environmental uh, studies and in environmental topics. And um, many faculty members are uh, focusing and have specific uh, interests and specific fields. And uh, some of them are listed here, such as the Great Lakes watershed pollution and remediation, impacts of global climate change on ecosystems, disease ecology, biochemistry in aquatic ecosystems, environmental microbiology, aquatic and terrestrial ecotoxicology. We are looking at crop wild hybridization in our department, at microbial fuel cell development. As you can see, it's a vast field of environmental and environmentally related topics that are covered and are uh, promoted by uh, our faculty members who are both teaching courses in this field, but also uh, conducting active research, of course, involving students in the laboratory work and in these topics.
All right. And another opportunity for experiential learning is the Science Discovery Zone. And so uh, Ryerson University, you may have heard about several of the zones that are across the university. And these give you opportunities to um, interact with and engage with entrepreneurship and to use your science education in new and different ways that are not necessarily a traditional research lab setting. So the Science Discovery Zone sits within the Faculty of, of Science. We call it the SDZ. Um, and this is a place where undergraduate students can start to ideate and define projects that involve their learning. They, get, uh, they obtain support. There are credit courses available. And it's um, if you are a member of the Science Discovery Zone, there are many workshops and events where you can meet people within different um, biology, biomedical, and even chemistry and outside external um, situations and companies. So these are frequently hands-on um, opportunities to learn about applying your knowledge from the biology and biomedical science program. So you can work directly with leaders of industry, entrepreneurs, and um, frequently these focus on real life problems. And the zone is um, known for having um, uh, hackathons and various events and networking events where we try to address a question with um, outsourcing and having student support. So for example, one here is this uh, UBio discovery with gut health. And this is an example of a company that came about and was uh, really founded within the science discovery zone. So there's uh, several links down here and lots of opportunities within the zone to obtain more research interactions and experience, but also with the element of entrepreneurial experience and uh, learning. So Ryerson University, uh, we have to remember that also provides uh, a very rich environment in services to help everyone to be successful. You, we want you to achieve this. And if you encounter a problem, if you struggle, uh, mainly in the first year, it's a transition to the university world and to a new uh, environment, to a new way of learning and approaching the programs. If you feel that you need help, you must deal with it right away. Contact the program director and together with uh, guidance and advice, we can also direct you and instruct you to access one of the many resources that Ryerson University is making available for you. Also, uh, I would like to encourage you to make uh, sure that you are becoming uh, knowledgeable on policies and regulations of the university, as these will allow you to uh, navigate and to complete successfully the program that you are going to start, many of you in the fall, as you are mentioning. Examples of uh, support services that you may access would be academic accommodation support, English language support, math support, study skills transition support, a writing center, a test center, we have career cent a career center, then very importantly we have Ryerson Student Union that you may ad adhere to and, and uh, uh, collaborate with, student financial assistance, it, uh, Ryerson has a health center, that you may access and many, many more which are listed on various uh, Ryerson websites and towards which you can be directed by the program director by counseling at Ryerson. Um, so we're getting close to the end of our formal uh, presentation or slides here. Um, and this is just to highlight the fact that Ryerson also offers uh, financial support to, to students in the form of um, scholarships that are, are based on grades uh, and academic accomplishments. So this is based on students that have um, uh, certain admission averages and certain GPAs that are maintained throughout um, the, their course of study. Uh, and so this is meant to illustrate that um, somebody coming in with, a, with an admission average of 95% plus um, can be awarded a scholarship of $4,000 and potentially renewed if, if that individual maintains their, their high academic achievement uh, through four years to a total potential scholarship value of $16,000. Uh, um, and that there are also other um, levels of, of scholarship essentially based on um, admission averages that this is a way to, to support um, uh, students 
uh, based on, on their academic achievements, although there are a variety of other uh, avenues also for academic support and scholarships and awards that, that can be made available once um, students are, are at Ryerson uh, in addition to this. So thank you so much to our amazing faculty members. Now, before I get you to turn off your cameras, I'm hoping because we do have a little bit more time, you might be open to taking some live mm -hmm. questions that I will be feeding you. Um, one of the first questions I'd like to start with is, um, what would you say is the advantage or kind of something really exciting about the fact that students who are coming to Ryerson are getting to study biology or biomedical science in the heart of downtown Toronto? Um, what are any ad advantages to that? If you can name a couple. So I can maybe start on that and people can, uh, others can chime in on. I think um, from the point of view of biomedical uh, research and, and also the cell and molecular biology aspect of things, which I know a little bit better. Um, the uh, downtown Toronto is an incredibly rich environment for this. Our location in proximity to a variety of hospitals and, and, um, and health research institutes. This includes St. Michael's Hospital, with which Ryerson has a long-standing research agreement that allows us to um, really engage with some uh, very practical and translational opportunities for research. This is called the IBEST Institute, so um, the Institute for Biomedical Engineering, Science and Technology. So this is a collaboration between Ryerson and, and that hospital. Um, we also have uh, an opportunity to work with other hospitals, including the, the Hospital for Sick Children, uh, the University Health Network, um, Mount Sinai Hospital. Uh, and really it's a unique environment to be able to do research because it is one of maybe a handful, uh, you know, five or six similar research clusters in the world um, that, that we would be able to, to access. So it's really putting you in the very leading edge of, of not just classroom learning, but also uh, opportunities to apply that outside of the classroom uh, and really enrich your, um, your research in, in that way. Um, so I, I don't know if uh, I, maybe Dr. Bostan can, can speak to more of the environmental side of things, and I don't know if Dr. Sabatinos has more to add uh, on either of those. Um, I would follow up and um, the fact that we are studying environmental sciences and ecology in the middle of a huge urban agglomeration uh, is coming actually with a great advantage. We are one of the few research universities who are looking at urban ecology, at this direct relation between the Great Lakes and uh, large urban populations, both in terms of how we can uh, um, deal with uh, the waste that we are producing as a city, as a human uh, group, and how this waste, instead of looking at it as a waste, we are looking at it as a resource and the potential source of uh, raw materials that can be recycled. Um, we are looking at the relation between the development of the urban areas and maintenance of the living ravines and parks that we have in this environment. So all of this proximity of uh, the natural systems within this densely populated urban agglomeration, which is Toronto, makes puts us in a unique position to be able to understand, to study, and to follow on these on these aspects. I think my uh, colleagues have excellently answered the question. I think that um, it does also flavor. I think that um, the in a way. I have found that our students in the biomedical science program, certainly I am not sure about the biology program, but the students in the biomedical science program tend to be a very collegial and tight knit group. And I think this comes from shared experiences being on campus and, um, and, and their interaction within the campus environment and the resources in downtown Toronto. And I think that uh, my colleagues have very nicely described the benefits to uh, being in this environment with the flavors of the research of the different programs involved. So um, really, I just echo what they say. Yeah, I don't know if some of the attendees um, watching this have heard the phrase Ramily before. Um, we use it quite frequently. It's a little corny, but we love it because you truly do feel like you're part of the Ryerson family, whether it's the family of the biomedical sciences program or the biology program, the, the family of the faculty of science itself, or of course, the larger Ryerson University family. Um, we had another question um, from a student who's curious about the opportunities to do a double major. Um, Dr. Sabatinos, I know you talked about it, a major and a minor, but can you maybe talk about 
about the possibility of doing a double major in the Faculty of Science? Does it exist? Um, so within the biomedical science program, it is not possible to do a double major. However, you could have more than one minor. So the biomedical science program is the program that you graduate with. And um, it is possible though to have um, one or two minors. I've seen two frequently. And I noticed that, oh, Okay, that was a different question being answered live. Great, yeah. Um, for those of you watching um, at Ryerson University, you can't do double um, majors within our Faculty of Science. As uh, Dr. Sabatino has mentioned, absolutely with the minors, and there's so many amazing minor opportunities. Um, you'll be able to sit down with your um, program department advisor to kind of plan that out um, throughout your time at Ryerson. But unfortunately, no for the double major. That being said, you get to throw yourself and completely immerse yourself in whichever um, major you decide. And we do also have undeclared science for those of you who are are interested in um, taking a little bit more time to decide, but keep in mind that biomedical science isn't an option for the undeclared um, major. We do have a question about biology. Um, so uh, one of our attendees asked, do most bio biology careers require to go to some kind of grad school after you complete the program? So maybe I can uh, start that one off. Um, the answer I would say to that is no. Um, but it's all about the uh, opening of opportunities, right? So I, the way I would view a, a degree, a, a bachelor's degree in, in biology uh, or biomedical science or in any science um, is that it gives you the foundational knowledge to open opportunities to a diversity of different careers. And, and what you really learn that will be of value to employers and to your future career is not just the content and the science, but it's your ability to think critically, to write, to communicate, um, to, uh, to build those skills that are going to be in high value, no matter what that you're going to go and, and do. So some of our graduates end up with positions and, and jobs that, that do involve some direct application of science uh, and the content that they learn. Others will learn to apply what, they, what they've learned in their degree to something um, completely different, uh, but still being a very valuable part of their professional development because of those skills um, of critical thinking, um, of analysis, of attention to detail, of communication. Um, and so what professional programs can offer you is an expansion of that and, and developing some further expertise. And sometimes that involves graduate school where you would do more research uh, and build on those skills in a different capacity. Um, other times, uh, more practical knowledge of certain professions is needed. So for instance, that would be where uh, medical school or dentistry or pharmacy um, would build on your on your degree, um, but it isn't necessarily the case that you have to go do a, a professional degree. Um, there's lots of uh, people that, that go on to very successful careers with an undergraduate degree without doing any subsequent um, additional training, and it all depends on what you want to do and what further opportunities you may want to you may want to have, and if those professions require any kind of specific additional uh, additional training. So I'm being a little bit general, but I'm happy to answer any specific questions if you have career, like specific careers in mind, about what you might be looking at um, down those lines. We do have quite a few students who are interested in dentistry, um, medical school, um, and pharmacy, so um, pharmacology. Um, so curious whether our programs here at Ryerson would enable students to kind of continue on through the dentistry pathway, um, med school, which you talked about during your presentation, as well as um, pharmaceuticals. Yeah, so, so I guess this would be a follow-up and a continuation on what we, we covered during the presentation. And uh, all of these programs, um, have their specific requirements in terms of courses, in terms of the GPA, in terms of um, the uh, uh, file that you are uh, preparing when you are applying to these schools. And we do have a number of students who graduated from our programs and successfully continued either in the dentistry program or in medical schools or in pharmacology. So our program is preparing you and is uh, offering all the requirements to be accepted in these programs. Now it's up to you to, to follow on uh, these requirements and of course to, to complete uh, very successfully the various courses and the various requirements that are linked to the professional schools. 
Amazing, thank you. Um, we have a student who's um, curious after what the three of you spoke about research opportunities. So how competitive is it to obtain a research position with a professor while doing an undergraduate degree? I can start into the answer for that. Um, it's a great question. I think the thing is, so I'm actually this week, one of the biomedical science second year courses is called biomedical science orientation part two, it's BMS 280. This week I'm talking in that course about research opportunities for undergraduates. And in that course specifically, I'm covering how to apply to a research lab, how to write that email, um, what you should highlight in order to make that interest in research happen. And I think what it translates to is that you may not have research opportunity to start off with, but you have transferable skills that um, count for a lot when you're joining a research group. So a research, joining a research lab is, is a bit like joining a family in a sense, because um, there's a structure and an order to how things happen. And you are gonna be spending your time to help a project. And in return, you're going to be getting training. So what you want to do is to find a relationship with a professor and with a group that works for you and works for them. And frequently, I would say the majority of our students find that placement and it's not actually that difficult. The first step is reaching out. Well, the first step is doing the research, the background to figure out what it is you want, what kind of opportunity, what kind of research you're interested thinking about why you're interested in that, and then reaching out to see if there is space and availability. And, and as I say, I think the majority of our students are very happy in the sense that they get feedback that is both positive, um, and if, it, if it, a research arrangement can't be made at that time, very frequently, for example, if I can't take a student, I'll say, but I think you should contact so-and-so because I think you would be an excellent fit. So we really do try to optimize and maximize your ability to have these experiences um, within research labs. Fantastic. Um, we have a student specifically interested in going into genetic counseling and they're curious whether biomedical science would be better than biology for that specific career path as it deals with mostly human genetics. Uh, I can start to tackle this one and then my colleagues um, in the biomedical science portfolio can uh, chime in. I would say that either biomedical science or biology would be an excellent uh, footing for genetic counseling. Last week in that same course, <laughs> BMS 280, um, we had genetic counseling come in and speak about admissions requirements and um, the programs for genetic counseling. And there's a variety of um, um, electives within the Faculty of Science that you can take that will further your genetics knowledge. So every, everyone in biology and biomedical science has to take BLG 400, which is the introductory genetics course. And then aside from that, you have the opportunity to take other more specialized courses in, geno in genetics, such as uh, genomics and proteomics, human genetics, epigenetics. Um, and then after that, the admissions to genetic counseling program, you require an undergraduate degree. And also um, I know in the case of the um, genetic counseling program here at the University of Toronto, you require um, portfolio in terms of um, like community service type work um, and, and outreach because there is a counseling element to the genetics also as well. Um, but great question. I don't know if um, Dr. Boston or Dr. Antonescu would like to add to that, but my vote is that either program would not only be great, it would be um, a very good fit. I don't know that I have much to add to that. Uh, great answer by Dr. Sabatinos. But one of the things I would say, people considering highly competitive professional programs like um, genetic counseling or medical or dental um, or, or several others is that one of the things that's gonna determine whether you're going to be able to uh, be admitted to those programs is a very high GPA. So you're gonna have to have a high degree of academic success. Um, and what I'd like to suggest is that you focus on taking a program for your bachelor's degree that you're really passionate about, because that's what's going to determine if you're going to be successful. There are many programs um, within the Faculty of Science at Ryerson, for instance, that will give you the entrance requirements for those programs, those foundational courses that you have to tick off on the checklist of having taken to apply for those professional programs. 
But because you're going to have to do exceptionally well in all those courses, you want to take a program where there's going to be courses where you wake up excited every day to go to class and, and to learn about the new material. If you're, if you're sort of taking a program because you think it's most likely to, to be what gets you into those professional programs, but you're not really interested in the material, you're going to be setting yourself up with some severe challenges. Um, so I would say, you know, one thing to consider is what are you really passionate about? Um, what gets you excited to learn? Uh, and that might be the best path um, to, to get you into the professional program if that's what you're absolutely focused on. That is fantastic advice. I know um, part of what we do is try and match students up with the program that's going to be the best fit for them and try and find the program that's going to make them the happiest because you're going to be excited about school, your grades will be up, you'll get an amazing scholarship because your grades are up. So it all ties together. And yeah, hopefully these sessions are helping you kind of determine what program might be that best fit for you. Um, so great advice. Um, Dr. Bostan, we have a question about how heavy the um, biology course is in terms of physics courses. So is it, are there quite a few physics courses in biology? Um, is that more left to the bio, or for the medical physics program? So how, how much physics is involved in biology? The uh, physics courses, uh, the required courses uh, are linked to the first year and is the common uh, uh, science uh, program and the foundation. And uh, here you, you are going to uh, be required to take one physics course and physics course. And then it's also a follow up in uh, for professional and professionally related course related courses. So uh, while they are present in the curriculum, I guess that uh, um, one or two courses are enough to, to, to complete the minimal requirements. Otherwise, you would always be strongly encouraged to, to delve more into this wonderful field and to take more of these courses that are offered. Yeah, and if we do have any um, viewers here who are really passionate about physics, I definitely encourage you to check out our medical physics session at our virtual open house to hear all about that exciting program. I'm going to ask one more question and then we'll let you folks uh, get off camera and we'll answer the rest of them on the back end. Um, question is, um, student is curious about the ways that the biology program can set you up to become a pharmacist. So is that integrated into the courses or those specifically through the electives? Um, how would the program help prepare you to be a pharmacist? I can maybe start this one off. So um, pharmacy is one of those professional programs that um, I was alluding to earlier. So there, there are um, a lot of professional programs. Again, I'll, I'll lump pharmacy in with um, the medical school and dentistry um, and, and others that are fairly similar in terms of their requirements. Um, most uh, of those programs are students will, will be prepared just by virtue of taking the courses within the, uh, the core program. Uh, so courses like organic chemistry, um, courses in um, anatomy and physiology, and, and a few others are core to, the, to some aspects of the program. Um, there, there's obviously an opportunity for, for once you identify a specific pharmacy program, of course, the pharmacy program requirements are going to be specific to that, whatever that program is. Um, but what are uh, part of what, what we do as program directors is to offer you that advice and, and suggestions of what you should be adding, if anything, to your degree if you wanted to take, um, uh, you know, to apply for a particular professional program such as pharmacy. So uh, it's kind of like a double checking um, in. So you, you would come and see one of your program directors, uh, one of us, for instance, we kind of go through the list of, of courses that the, the program that you intend to apply to or programs. Uh, have and we'd make sure that you are choosing any additional courses you would need to have that aren't already part of the core program. So uh, that's a sort of a double check to make sure that that you are meeting those things. But typically students who graduate from either the biology or biomedical science program will have the prerequisite requirements uh, for entrance into those professional uh, professional programs like pharmacy. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Antonescu, Dr. Bostan, and Dr. Sabatinos for all that information. It always makes me want to go back to school after I hear these sessions. Uh, and I didn't even take science in high school, so that's saying a lot. We are about to shut down our um, audio and video. So for all of our remaining attendees, you won't be able to see or hear us, but we will absolutely be on the back end, still taking your Q&A up until the end of the hour. So definitely feel free to keep populating those questions in the Q&A pod and one of our staff members behind the scenes will be answering those questions for you. 
On behalf of Ryerson University, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, and we hope to see you during our other virtual open, session, open house sessions during the week. To see all of those sessions, just go to our Ryerson at home website, www.ryerson.ca slash at dash home. You can see all of our virtual open house sessions. Thanks so much, folks.